The largest land agency in the U.S. has released a new ambitious plan to focus on outdoor recreation. Thousands of RVs get stuck in the desert at Burning Man, new RV models, and more. It's time for the latest in RV and camping news. The Bureau of Land Management, or BLM, holds 243 million acres of land. That's a full 10% of the entire U.S. land mass. And the influx in use in the past decade has been taking its toll on BLM lands. From illegal dumping to squatters to vandalism, BLM lands are largely a free-for-all, considering the agency has about one law enforcement ranger for every 10 million acres of land. As national parks and forests become more and more popular, many are discovering the joys of camping on BLM land, which isn't all boondocking, by the way. BLM operates over 400 campgrounds. That's almost as many as KOA. In the last decade, recreational visits to BLM land have increased from 58 million per year to 81 million per year. But funding, while it has gone up, hasn't kept pace. It's down from 84 cents per visit to 74 cents per visit on average. BLM's main purpose is to just hold these large swaths of land, manage leases to energy and mining companies, and protect those lands from misuse. Well, now they're putting outdoor recreation forward with an ambitious plan to respond to current demand and chart a course to meet future needs. Through the new blueprint for 21st century outdoor recreation, BLM is establishing a new vision to proactively manage for recreational experiences that invite all to share in the enjoyment and stewardship of their public lands. Now, there's a lot of PR speak in this plan, and frankly, much of it is meaningless without funding. But it does represent a major shift into prioritizing recreation. What will that mean for campers? Only time will tell. It's not exactly laid out in the plan. There will likely be more campgrounds, though, which I think is probably the best way to deal with select overrun boondocking areas instead of just shutting down camping altogether. We could see some things that campers might not like as the agency moves to a more proactive instead of reactive approach. More fees, for instance, and frankly, more advertising. BLM wants to let more people know that they're there and BLM lands are an option. A large part of the plan is to explore more public-private partnerships, which can go different ways. Sometimes that's how we end up with $150 a night campgrounds on public lands. But the Bureau of Land Management says it wants to make more pathways for grants, donations, and other nonprofit sources of funding. The Burning Man Festival in the Nevada desert turned into a mud pit after a rare desert rainstorm flooded the roads leading in, leaving tens of thousands stranded. However, as the week progressed, the roads dried up a bit, allowing for a mass exodus. Organizers had implemented a driving ban, but began allowing traffic to flow out of the main road on Monday, even as they encouraged festival goers to delay their departure to alleviate traffic congestion. Within two hours, the estimated wait time on the road out was five hours. One RV burned down on the road heading out, and a Ram TRX owner went viral for ripping their travel trailer through the mud as fast as they could. Burning Man is known for its emphasis on self-sufficiency, and this ethos was put to the test as attendees were advised to ration their food and water supplies. Despite the challenging conditions, about 30,000 people remained at the site, making the best of the situation. The festival draws close to 80,000 attendees each year for a unique blend of wilderness camping and avant-garde performances. The event's highlight is the burning of a large wooden effigy and a wood temple structure. However, due to the weather conditions, the fires were delayed to ensure safe exit routes by the end of the Labor Day weekend. This video is sponsored by RVMattress.com by Brooklyn Bedding. Did you know that most mattresses that come with your RV are just a placeholder? Most RV manufacturers never intended that you'd actually sleep on it. We've been using mattresses from Brooklyn Bedding in our last two RVs and we couldn't be happier. You can choose your thickness and all sorts of different odd RV mattress sizes. That customization was essential for clearing the bedroom slide in our fifth wheel and for the kids' bunks in the new travel trailer. 
We're sleeping great on real mattresses from a real mattress company in our RV. RVmattress.com offers a 120-night sleep trial along with a 10-year warranty. Plus, their products are entirely toxin-free and simple to ship and set up. We've had them shipped directly to campgrounds, and you just unroll them and let them expand. You don't have to wait till you get back home. The RV Miles community gets 25% off when you visit RVmattress.com slash RVmiles and use the promo code RVmiles. That's RVmattress.com slash RVmiles with promo code RVmiles for 25% off. Our thanks to RVmattress.com for supporting this channel and to you for supporting our sponsors. RV dealership chain Camping World has officially launched their Eddie Bauer line of RVs, and they're a far cry from the off-roader they poorly photoshopped over a no-boundaries RV without permission. Instead, these are gussied up Dutchman and Heartland models that already exist. Camping World has a history of working with Heartland who make two of their other exclusive trailer lines, Pioneer and Mallard. I'll admit they do look nice, but to be very clear, Eddie Bauer is just a licensed name in this scenario, and it's a shell of the company it used to be. The folks at A-Liner, who make really unique, interesting, hard-sided pop-up trailers, have come up with a new solar model that cramps 800 watts of solar onto their trailer's signature dormer roof. They say it's the first pop-up camper in the industry to be entirely powered by solar. The A-Liner amp comes standard with an EcoFlow complete plug-and-play 48-volt power system and 5 kilowatt hours of lithium battery capacity. That's about 400 amp hours. And there's room for two more batteries. Everything can be powered from it, including the climate system and induction range. It's light enough to be towed by most midsize SUVs, and consumers can see the amp firsthand at the Hershey RV show that opens on September 13th. Now, remember last week when I told you about the new Winnebago access line and how you're going to see more manufacturers trying to make more entry-level models and bring those MSRPs down? Well, Keystone is doing it now too, but with a different approach. Keystone is launching the Classics Collection across eight of its production lines, models with fewer bells and whistles at a lower price. They're called different things across the different lines like Springdale Classics and Arcadia Select. Carbon Series and Fusion Impact Edition already existed, but they're both introducing new aluminum sidewall toy hauler floor plans starting at 7,000 pounds with MSRPs under $40,000. Keystone's vice president of sales said they're focusing on where the current market opportunity is, and that's going to be the customers who aren't being served by the high prices we're seeing right now in the industry. Frankly, I think a reduction in features is a good thing. A lot of brands are getting bloated with stuff that customers don't really need, and more technology sometimes means more things that can go wrong. Labor Day weekend took an unexpected turn for campers at a Willow, Alaska campground when rising floodwaters left at least 20 camping parties stranded. The Susitna Landing campground managed by the Alaska Department of Fish and Game had high river warnings already, but overnight Friday, the river broke its bank, flooding the entire campground. The campers in Loop A found themselves trapped with no way out. The only options were to walk or swim, but neither seemed feasible, especially for those with vehicles and equipment. It wasn't until Saturday evening around 6 or 7 p.m. that the water levels began to recede. However, the main access road into the campground remained under two feet of water that night. Campers attempted to contact the campground for assistance, but received only automated email responses over the holiday weekend. Finally, a quick update from that midweek video I did on the state of the RV industry. RV sales numbers for July were just released, and they've improved even more over last year than June, but they're still down. SSI says 37,272 units were sold in July, a 15.9% drop compared to last July. And on the whole, sales are down 17.8% now, over the course of the year. That's way better than a lot of people think it has been. This is the fifth month in a row that retail sales have outpaced wholesale shipments as the industry continues to work through an excess of inventory on dealer lots while waiting on orders for 2024 units to arrive. Through July, RV sales are outpacing manufacturing by 34%. Now, someone asked me in that video to break down the different types of RVs in those numbers. And I can tell you travel trailers, fifth wheels, and class B camper vans all felt right in line with that 16% drop over last July. While class A motorhomes are doing a bit better with a 13% drop and pop-up camping trailers only dropping 11%. Class C motorhomes, however, sold better this July than last, up 4%. 
That's it for this week's RV and camping news roundup. Please make sure to hit the like button if you got something out of this video. Subscribe if you want more like this and consider becoming a Mile Marker member to help support this channel. You can find all about it at rvmiles.com slash mile markers. We give you extra podcasts and a whole lot more. On the podcast this week, we're talking about some easy tips to keep your black and gray tanks in order. You can check it out on any podcast app. We'll see you next time, everybody. Bye-bye.